aside from this transmission having an electrical motor like this, as well as the traction motor in the transmission where the torque converter would normally be, this is basically a CVT8 transmission. And so this valve body, it looks exactly like a CVT8 transmission because it is. This is your primary pulley control solenoid. This is your secondary pulley control solenoid. This is your line pressure solenoid directly influencing the pressure regulator valve. And then the, it influences a reducing regulator valve, which that reducing regulator valve is used to supply pressure to these solenoids. And then we have the select solenoid. And then we have over here, which in a typical CVT-8, this is your lockup solenoid. But in this hybrid CVT, this is a C1 clutch solenoid. The C1 clutch is what, is what I have right here. It is a dry clutch mounted inside the traction electrical motor between the engine and the transmission. And this C1 clutch is used for a number of things. One, it, it is used when to start the, the engine, the electrical motor will kick this clutch when it's applied and it's gonna be applied by this solenoid. So this, this solenoid, C1 clutch solenoid, will apply this clutch hydraulically, but the clutch itself is a dry clutch. There's no fluid going through here. When this clutch is applied and the electric motor or the traction motor kicks in, it will start the engine. Other times, it will release a clutch. For example, if you're in park, the forward clutch and the reverse clutch is released. It will put this clutch on to charge the hybrid batteries as well. So this clutch is on and off for various locations. Now, this transmission also has a typical starter, and that starter is used under various conditions. One, under extremely cold conditions, they'll use a regular conventional starter to start the vehicle. But for safety reasons, if you are in park and you disconnect your your um, seat belt and you open the door, it will start the engine with the regular starter to let you know that that engine is still running because if it was just the electrical motor, you wouldn't realize that it was running and it could be dangerous. So they actually start the engine to let you know that it is running while you're in park. You have yet to turn the system off. It'll do the same thing if you're in park and you open up the hood. And so a regular starter will start the engine. Otherwise, it's the C1 clutch that'll start the engine. Now, the forward clutch and the reverse clutch are referred to as the C2 clutch. This is the C2 clutch. Now, the select solenoid is used. I'm sorry, this is a select solenoid here. It's called the select solenoid because it controls the engagement of the forward or the reverse clutch, depending on whether you select forward or reverse. So it will control that clutch and it will slip that clutch. Now I'm gonna flip this valve body around. And you will notice that this is the same with the CVT-8 and this, because it is a CVT-8 uh, type CVT as well as valve body. These two check balls are used to control the forward engagement and forward clutch release. That's why two balls. One ball controls the forward clutch engagement. The other controls the forward clutch release. The same with the two balls here for reverse. So this select solenoid is controlling the oil going to the manual valve. So if this solenoid malfunctions, you could have an actual no engagement. But you will also notice that you will have delayed engagement. The reason for this is that they do not want to have the forward or the reverse clutch to engage harshly, damaging the pulley assembly called the variator. So that's why they have such great control. In fact, on the old JF-11, Nissan said it is normal to have a two to three second delay going into gear. This is normal. But now, <clears throat> these clutches can be slipped 
And so there's a temperature sensor that monitors the heat of this clutch, both the forward and the reverse, and it's called the C2 temperature sensor. And if it starts to overheat, that's what this electrical motor is all about. This has a, this is plumbed to a tube that's going into the sump, and then the output of this is actually going through some plumbing from the side of the transmission all the way around the back side of the transmission where it then enters the circuit to supply cooling pressure on the hub where the forward clutch sits so it, the, the cooling oil will come up around the outside of the drum and can also go around the outside by where the reverse clutch is. So it's able to cool both the forward and reverse clutch, which is the purpose of this. Thank you for watching. For all confirmed fix videos and unlimited technical support, become an ATSG member, your transmission tech solution. Click the membership link below.